My name is Gong. Uh, I know I'm standing between you and dinner, so I will try to be on time. Uh, <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about adversarial machine learning in the context of detecting malicious crowdsourcing behaviors. Uh, this is a joint work with my lab mates and also my advisors uh, in UCSF and Bobber. So first off, uh, we know that machine learning has become a very successful tool in different security domains. Uh, we have machine learning classifiers to filter email spam, to identify network intrusions and malwares, and more recently, like last talk, we use machine learning to build a defenses uh, to catch spammers and fake accounts in social networks. This is a quick example uh, using machine learning to classify fake accounts. Uh, typically, you start with some accounts that you know, uh, some good accounts or some uh, fake accounts. Uh, you feed this data to a training model, which will generate a statistical classifier, and you can use it later to classify unknown accounts. Uh, despite its uh, success, uh, machine learning still has weaknesses. So, uh, for example, <clears throat> The statistical classifier uh, derived, is usually derived from a fixed data set, and it usually assumes the same distribution across the training data and the real-world data you're going to deal with later. Because machine learning has become so widely used and almost a standard tool in security defenses, you can expect those strong and smart adversaries to become aware of the usage and try to exploit this weakness uh, to protect themselves. So the interesting question is, how practical are those adversarial attacks? What are the practical constraints, and uh, how effective they are under such constraints? <clears throat> Excuse me. So recently, we had a chance to look at adversarial machine learning when we tried to apply machine learning uh, to deal with a real-world threat. So the problem is malicious crowdsourcing, or crowd turfing. So here, we just give some quick context. So crowd turfing is when attacker organize lots of real users to attack. So we have saw lots of examples on the internet, uh, like companies hire a lot of real users on the internet to spread rumors against the competitor. Uh, as a business owner, you can uh, purchase fake reviews from a lot of real people uh, to promote your business. And more recently, crowdsourcing effort has been used in political campaigns. So the reason to use real people is because they can easily uh, bypass many existing defenses. So for example, uh, I'm a real user, and I can solve any kind of captcha that is delivered to me, and solve uh, two-factor authentication as well. Um, also, as a real people, I can handcraft many high-quality and deceptive messages. So today, there are even online crowd surfing services that support such a campaigns. Uh, those are typically websites um, where you can find a lot of internet users to sign up, and they are willing to spam uh, for some money. Now, there are websites all over the world, and this is how typically it works. It is started from a customer. Uh, a customer could be a company or a politician who want to promote himself. And the customer will pay for the campaign, and it will go to the crowd searching website and uh, find those workers. So the worker can control their accounts in different online services and uh, perform the task they are required to. Um, particularly in China, we found two largest crowd surfing sites called ZBG and SDH. And we did the initial measurement on them and found that they already have uh, hundreds of million dollar industry uh, revenue per year. So to defend against the crowd turfing, uh, we think machine learning has a chance. Because unlike those uh, simple solutions like um, CAPTCHA and a RIT limit that doesn't re uh, really work on real people, so machine learning can build a more sophisticated user behavior models to distinguish those workers who are working on those tasks versus the rest regular users of the service. And for example, uh, we, did, uh, uh, we did a paper last year just to uh, build machine learning behavior models and to catch the fake accounts in social networks. And also, uh, malicious crowdsourcing provide a perfect scenario to look at adversarial machine learning. Because 
For one thing, we're dealing with a real user who are highly adaptive to any defenses. And the second problem is the crowd surfing sites and administrators, they have central control on all the workers and they presumably they can perform even more powerful countermeasures to protect their workers. So we have two goals in this study. So the first goal is to uh, develop machine learning detectors to detect malicious crowdsourcing. And we particularly focus on Weibo, which is the Chinese Twitter, and also a, uh, a really popular target of malicious crowdsourcing campaigns. So the second goal is to understand the impact of different adversarial attacks against this machine learning process and also try to understand the robustness of different learning classifiers. So we ask questions like which learning, uh, uh, cl which classifier is more accurate and what are the countermeasures that is available to those adversaries. So here's the outline of the talk. Uh, we'll first talk about um, uh, machine learning based detection and then we talk about adversarial machine learning attacks. So before I dive into details and I want to give a quick overview about what we try to do. So here the first step is to build a machine learning classifier to classify worker accounts that perform those tasks. And this is a simple picture uh, of the machine learning process. So the second step will look at different adversarial machine learning attacks to attack different components in this process. Uh, the first attack will look at evasion which happens during the detection phase, you have workers who will try to evade the classifier. Another attack will look at a poisoning attack, which happened during the training process. The crowd surfing administrators can tamper with the training data to mislead the model training. So first off, detection. And we need some data. So we actually have ground truth data about who are the workers that perform those tasks on Weibo. So the data come from the two crowd surfing sites called ZBG and SDH that we mentioned. So the nice thing about the two sites is that they keep their transaction record public, and from the record you can see how many uh, what are the campaigns, uh, who are the workers, and what are their Weibo accounts. So we collect three years of the complete history uh, transaction and found tw uh, 28,000 Weibo accounts that performs millions of tasks. And this serves our ground truth, and we go to Weibo to collect their profile. So by the way, most of the majority of them, 95% of them are still alive. And as a baseline comparison, uh, we crawl the baseline users uh, to, uh, for comparison purposes. So now we have ground truth worker accounts and uh, baseline users. So we find 35 features that are useful to classify uh, those accounts. And you can find more details about those specific details about the features uh, in the paper. So we use these features to build uh, different classifiers using different learning algorithms. And we found that random forest is, is the most accurate one with 95% accuracy. Uh, G48 decision tree is also accurate, uh, followed by SVMs. So we actually go ahead and build a more uh, dedicated classifier just to detect those professional workers. So those workers frequently prevent, uh, perform those tasks, and you can imagine they have higher suspicious signals, and this classifier achieve 99% accuracy. So those professional workers are responsible for 90% of the total spam generated from the system, so shutting them down will address most of the problem. So, so far we shows that it's actually possible to build an accurate classifier to detect those work accounts. The next, we'll look at the more interesting question of adversarial machine learning attacks. And this is the first attack we'll focus on, evasion attack. So in evasion attack, uh, the adversaries are uh, individual workers. So um, the workers will try to evade the classifier by mimicking normal users. So the key idea is to identify a set of features to modify so that they will look normal. But the specific strategy of adversaries really depends on what knowledge they have about the targeted classifier. So for example, uh, what's the learning algorithm, what's the feature space, et cetera. 
So we're interested to understand um, what knowledge is actually practically available to adversaries and uh, how does the different knowledge level will impact their evasion. So to do that, uh, we build a set of uh, different adversarial um, evasion models with different strength. So from the strongest ideal evasion model uh, to a more practical scenario. So here the first model is the strongest. It's per worker optimal evasion, where we assume each worker has the perfect knowledge about the classifier. So because they know exactly where the detection boundary is, they could modify the minimal saddle feature to barely and just cross that boundary uh, to make them not detected. So obviously this is a very strong model. And a weaker model is a global optimal. Um, assume that they know the direction of the detection boundary so they can uniformly move to more, towards that boundary. In feature ev aware evasion, we assume the adversary knows the relative uh, ranking of the feature importance so they can modify more important feature first. We also look uh, at the practical evasion scenario uh, where we assume uh, adversaries know nothing about the classifier. So they don't know where the detection boundary is. So what can they do? Well, a simple but a very effective approach is to just to estimate normal user statistics. For example, they can crawl some normal uh, you know, baseline user accounts and analyze them. So as a worker, you can compare yourself to the normal user statistics, and you can easily figure out which feature make you look suspicious and modify them first. So here we show some quick result on the uh, ideal evasion scenario and also the practical scenario. So here, uh, in the evasion, uh, so this is per worker optimal evasion and shows the number of feature uh, changed versus how many workers evade the classifier. You can see this is a highly effective. 99% uh, of uh, worker accounts can evade the classifier by modifying uh, less than five features. Uh, of course, each worker probably need to modify five different features. Uh, particularly, the G48 decision tree, which is the blue line, is highly vulnerable because you can only you only need to modify one to two features to evade this classifier. But when it comes to practical scenario, uh, the evasion uh, efficiency is much less because you no longer have perfect knowledge. Uh, so a lot of the attack relies on estimations. But nevertheless, most of the classifier are vulnerable to evasion attack, and. Uh, particularly, G4080 decision tree is a single tree model fitting to the training data. You can imagine once you're figuring out which is the key node in the tree structure, you can easily break it. So the key here is really to limit adversary's knowledge on your classifier. So after the evasion attack, we next look at poisoning attack. Poisoning uh, attack happens during the training phase, and the adversaries are crowd surfing administrators. Um, the reason they can perform poisoning attack is because defenders take this training data from their website and they can tamper with the training data uh, to protect their workers. So here we focus on two practical uh, poisoning approaches. So the first one is injection. Uh, the idea is you can inject a mislabeled sample to the training data and mislead the classifier training. Uh, so for example, as a defender, you have some uh, worker accounts and you have some normal user accounts. But if adversaries manage to inject normal user accounts uh, into the training data, but label them as workers, uh, you will train a wrong classifier like this. And if you compare with the original correct classifier, this essentially create a region in your feature space that will guarantee to fire false positives later. Another idea is altering based attack. Uh, because as a crowd surfing administrator, you have central control on your workers. Uh, you can push in your workers towards the normal user region in the feature space and make the training very hard. You can not easily separate these two class of accounts. So how to do this in practice? Well, um, as a central control, as an administrator, you can enforce the central policies. Uh, so for example, one of the features we use is uh, the birthday feature, a user is finishing task very quickly. 
So to reduce burst, you can slow down your worker by enforcing minimal intervals between taking two tasks, and then you can you know, potentially save them. So here's a quick result showing you the in injection-based attack. And we can inject the, uh, the normal, a normal user account into the public uh, transaction record. And when Defender took this record, they will be labeled as a worker, and this is how they fire false positives. So you can see it is very effective. 10% of poisoning uh, samples will increase the false positive rate by 5%. And again, the G48 decision tree is the most vulnerable classifier. So if you remember, uh, the decision tree actually is more accurate than SVMs when there's no attack happens. So more accurate classifier can sometimes be more uh, vulnerable. So uh, let's just quickly wrap up. So uh, more accurate classifiers uh, can be highly vulnerable even to some simple countermeasures from adversaries. And we found there's no single classifier that are constantly robust against all different kind of adversarial attacks. And particularly, uh, overly simplified model like a decision tree can be highly vulnerable. And also, we found the key is, he, is to, uh, it's very important to limit adversaries' knowledge on your classifier. So as a future work, we're thinking, uh, we're interested in to improve the, uh, the robustness of machine learning classifiers. So one of the direction is uh, ensemble learning or ensemble method. So the idea is to integrate a multiple classifier in a single detector and structure them in a way so that if adversary manage to compromise or break one of the classifier, there's still others to make things right. Uh, another uh, interesting direction is to look at adversarial machine learning attacks in unsupervised learning uh, scenarios. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm glad to take questions from the audience. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Murat Kantar Jolo from your Soft Tech Set Dallas. I have a question about the uh, setup. So it's been known in the adversarial machine learning, the attribute selection may have an important impact in the evasion. Mm -hmm. So if you are choosing hard to manipulate attributes, uh, in, while building your models, so the attack success rate will, will go down. And the second part of it is there are lots of efforts recently to develop more robust adversarial resistant classifiers like support vector machines that are resistant to adversarial attacks. Have you look into those type of work? Thanks for the question. Uh, so the first question is uh, attribute selection or feature selection. Uh, so in our experiment, all the features are useful features because in the current setting, uh, they can distinguish workers from user accounts. Um, but for some features, it's easy to modify and it can easily to, uh, to, to break the classifier only using uh, some simple features. Uh, in our current model, we focus on adversaries' knowledge on your, uh, on your feature space and a classifier and how much that impact the evasion. But I think that's a very interesting uh, angle to look at uh, the feature selection and a cost to, to modify the feature uh, to make the model more stronger. Uh, another question, uh, the second question is about the current effort to improve the robustness of machine learning classifiers. Uh, I think I agree with you that in our experiment, we, sh we found that random forest and SVMs are relatively more robust than some simple models like a decision tree because the classifier, when we build it, the, in, the inherent structure has some nature to tolerate noises. So that's why certain injection or a simple evasion probably don't hurt them that much. Um, hope that answered the question. Hi, uh, Kurt Thomas, Google. So what I was interested in is last year you presented a semi-supervised approach. This year is more of a core machine learning and we just mm -hmm. saw a I would say outlier detection. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, which do you think is best for crowd surfing versus say fully automated systems and which are most susceptible to this type of evasion, like in your personal opinion? Uh, that's actually a very good question because uh, uh, last year <laughs> uh, we did uh, semi-supervised learning to identify the uh, uh, sybils in social networks. Uh, that work was chosen to use uh, semi-supervising because we assumed that the 
the baseline user is relatively stable. Uh, it's follow the same line with, uh, with the last uh, talk because we, uh, we assume the baseline user, the majority users are good and they're, that they're sta stable patterns. Um, but for, uh, for this particularly uh, crowd surfing uh, or malicious crowdsourcing, uh, the, compo the, the, uh, the adversaries we're dealing with changed because they are real users. Um, the real users can, I think it is more easily to fit into the normal user, a normal user baseline. So uh, I guess for enterprise-wise learning, it will be a, a lot more difficult. So that's why we, once we have ground truth, we want to try to the uh, supervised learning first. Uh, but yeah, as a future worker, we definitely want to explore how much enterprise learning could help to uh, detect them and whether it's more efficient. All right, thanks. thanks. Thank you.